Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday, May 28th. I'm Stephanie Haney. This is your 3 News Now early update. Yes, it is Thursday, also known as the day before Friday. Another week just flying by. We've got lots of information to give to you today. These are our top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Before we get into the rest of the things that we always tackle on Thursdays, we will first start with the most up-to-date numbers from the Ohio Department of Health related to COVID-19 and how those cases, death numbers, hospitalizations, and ICU admissions are looking here in the state of Ohio. So these are the numbers that we received yesterday at 2 p.m. That's when the numbers come in each day from the Ohio Department of Health. So as of yesterday, the number of new cases was down for the second day in a row, but new deaths, new hospitalizations, and new ICU admissions were all up significantly so. As of yesterday, the total number of confirmed positive and probable cases based on that expanded CDC definition in Ohio is now 33,439. Again, that's 33,439 dating all the way back to March 9th when we first learned that COVID-19 was present here in the state of Ohio. Again, Dr. Amy Acton, the director of our Ohio Department of Health, has told us that antibody testing now shows that COVID-19 was present here in the state of Ohio as early as January. So yesterday, we saw 433 new reported cases of COVID-19. So let's take that back to Monday when we saw a spike. So on Monday, we saw an increase of new cases with 566 new cases. That dropped down on Tuesday to 529 new cases and then on Wednesday to 433 new cases. So we've got a couple days in a row of a decline in new daily reported cases, which is good news. But do keep in mind that there is a bit of a lag in these reporting numbers. So they were reported yesterday at 2 p.m., but those cases have fluctuated over the past several days in terms of when they were actually made known to medical professionals. Now, as for the number of deaths, we reached a grim milestone this week in the state of Ohio topping 2,000 deaths for the state. The total number of deaths reported related to COVID-19 is now 2,044. And yesterday, we saw a significant jump in the number of new daily reported deaths. 42, to be exact, were the number of new deaths reported yesterday. So if we take that back to Monday, there were 18 new deaths reported on Monday. There were 15 new deaths reported on Tuesday, and then yesterday that jumped up significantly to 42 new reported deaths. In terms of the number of hospitalizations, the total number of hospitalizations since March 9th in Ohio is now 5,700. Yesterday, there was a significant jump in the number of new hospitalizations reported. There were 121 new hospitalizations reported. So if we take that back to Monday, we saw 35 new hospitalizations on Monday, 68 new hospitalizations on Tuesday, and then 121 new hospitalizations yesterday on Wednesday. When we break those hospitalizations down even further to the number of intensive care unit admissions, the total number of ICU admissions being back to March 9th is now 1,492 in the state of Ohio. And we saw a big jump in that again yesterday as well. There were 42 new ICU admissions reported yesterday. So let's take that back to Monday. On Monday, we saw five new reported ICU admissions. On Tuesday, we saw seven new ICU reported admissions. And yesterday, we saw 42 new ICU reported admissions. So that's quite a jump from the past couple of days there and from what we've seen for the past several weeks. That's the biggest jump we've seen since last Monday, a week and a half ago, when there were 34 new ICU admissions. So we'll be keeping an eye on that as well. And also, yesterday, we saw a grim milestone nationally the U.S. has officially surpassed 100 reported deaths related to COVID-19. So as of 10.45 a.m. this morning, the number of total U.S. deaths is now 100,576. We always break those numbers down in more detail in the afternoon, so we will look in more detail at the U.S. and the global numbers for cases and deaths of COVID-19 when we come back in the afternoon at 2 p.m. when we get those updated numbers from the Ohio Department of Health. Now let's take a look at the unemployment situation both across the country and here in Ohio. 
41 million Americans have now filed for unemployment. More than 2.1 million people applied for unemployment benefits last week. So that number is since the virus outbreak intensified in March, though not all of those people are still unemployed, but that's the total number of people who have applied since March. The Labor Department's report on Thursday includes a count of all the people now receiving unemployment aid, which is 21 million. So of those 41 million Americans who have filed for unemployment since March, since COVID-19 really became well known here in the U.S. since we started to learn about the spread across the country, 21 million have remained on unemployment aid. So that's a, that's a rough measure from the Department of Labor at this time. First time applicants for unemployment aid though is still high by historical standards, but it has fallen across the country for the past eight weeks. Here in Ohio, the number of new first time unemployment claims has also dropped for eight weeks in a row. The most up-to-date data we have today from the Ohio Department of Labor is that there were 42,082 new unemployment claims for the week ending May 23rd. Now that's not including the people who have filed for those expanded unemployment benefits under the U.S. CARES Act, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. In the last week, more than 44,000 new Pandemic un Unemployment Assistance Program claims were filed. That's down significantly though from last week when under those expanded benefits, the PUA benefits, a total of 134,468 people applied for those expanded benefits. Now, this is another situation where there was a major backlog. There was a lot of confusion when this first started, whether the people who were eligible for those expanded benefits were supposed to apply through the normal unemployment channel, the usual unemployment channel, the W-2 worker unemployment channel here in the state of Ohio. But then we did figure out at the beginning of the month of May that they were to apply through a separate portal for those expanded benefits. And there are still people, by the way, who have applied for those benefits, who haven't gotten them, who have already gone back to work. Tattoo workers, for example, are one of those people. A prime example, a lot of people here in Northeast Ohio who work in the tattoo field went back to work last week without having received any of those benefits, though they are eligible. But do keep this in mind. If you are eligible for those benefits, and many people are, many people who never previously were eligible for those benefits, even if you haven't been able to get through, keep applying because your benefits will be retroactive back to the date of when you lost your work, back through at least March 9th here in the state of Ohio when we had our first reported case of COVID-19. Now in April, the national jobless rate was 14.7%. That's the highest since the Great Depression. And many economists think that rate will near 20% for the month of May when we do get those finals numbers in. So states are gradually restarting their economies. They're letting some businesses, like we just talked about, tattoo shops, gyms, retail shops, restaurants, hair and nail salons, reopen with some restrictions. So as that happens, some people are being recalled to work. Some laid off people are starting to work again. And the number of people receiving unemployment benefits has dropped. So that's indicated in the fact that according to the U.S. Department of Labor, though 41 million people have applied for unemployment since March, 21 million people are currently estimated to be receiving unemployment benefits. Here's a story that is taking over social media right now. President Donald Trump is preparing an order to do something about social media interaction, social media protections for public speech. This draft executive order is expected to argue that actions like Twitter's fact check, which is something that President Donald Trump has recently had experience with, mean that they should lose the protections of being a publisher. So this is a long time debate whether a platform, whether they have any control over the content, whether that makes them more of an editor or more of a publisher, more of a free form where people can go and express their ideas. It's sort of like in the old days when you had the community space where people would come into the town square and shout their ideas and people couldn't necessarily edit those ideas or restrict them in any way. So this comes two days after President Donald Trump took issue with Twitter for fact-checking some of his tweets. So Twitter has 
recently implemented this fact-checking structure, and this is the first time that they've applied it to tweets by the president. And when that happened, Trump threatened social media companies with new regulation or even closing them down on Wednesday. But something to keep in mind here is that he does not have the authority to do that by himself. So this proposed executive order would direct the executive branch agencies, that's including the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, to study whether they can place new rules on these kinds of companies. There are experts who doubt that much can be done without an official act of Congress, and this also isn't the first draft of an executive order of this kind. So the Trump administration previously tried to put something together similar to this, but it didn't go anywhere for a couple of reasons. One of those reasons being the very thing that President Donald Trump is taking issue right now, and that is freedom of speech. On Wednesday, Trump said that tech giants are silencing conservative voices. That's a direct quote from him. However, federal courts have ruled as recently as this morning that social media companies are private entities with the legal right to police content on their sites. Despite that, Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany said Trump would sign an executive order relating to social media companies. That's expected to happen today, but no further details were expected there were uh there was a draft that was kind of floating around some language that was floating around but the order that is signed is expected to look different because there was some conversation around the fact that possibly that first draft was not vetted by other agencies including the fcc so here's a little bit of context for you why this is such a big debate about fact checking on social media platforms mike oren who is the CPO of the Dallas Morning News, tweeted yesterday that President Donald Trump had tweeted a Dallas News story. And within an hour, that tweet had had 10,000 retweets, 29,000 likes, tons of replies, and yet not any increased traffic on the Dallas Morning News website. So Mike Oren posed this question. Am I to believe that these news-hungry followers get all they need from a headline and a tweet? He went on to say, this is why we need fact-checking on social platforms. If someone someday in a position of influence was to tweet headlines with false conclusions, people who don't click might get the wrong idea. Far-fetched, maybe, but you've got to look ahead at unexpected circumstances. That was Mike Oren's tweet. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, who is the head of Facebook, came out and said that social media should not be the arbiter of truth. After that comment was made, Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, took to Twitter and he said that what Twitter is doing by implementing fact-checking and adding context to tweets that are placed on the platform does not make Twitter an arbiter of truth. Here's what Jack Dorsey said. Our intention is to connect the dots of conflicting statements and show the information in dispute so people can judge for themselves. More transparency from us is critical so folks can clearly see the why behind our actions. Jack Dorsey then went on to specifically address the Trump tweets that were flagged with the fact-checking element. He said this, per our civic integrity policy, which he posted a link to, the tweets yesterday may mislead people into thinking they don't need to register to get a ballot, Only registered voters receive ballots. We're updating the link on real Donald Trump's tweet to make this more clear. If you want to see those tweets directly, they are linked on WKYC.com and our WKYC apps. You can go into all of that. Obviously, there's a lot going on there. Lots of legalities, lots of constitutional issues. This is something that has been being debated by the highest courts for a very long time. This is something that I studied in law school. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here in the modern day because when we were studying this back then, it was a very different world. And when they were deciding those cases back then that we studied that were years and years old, it was also a very different world. So we'll definitely be following this very closely. It has a lot of implications for a lot of people who connect with the president and connect with a lot of people over social media. Here in Northeast Ohio, the haunted Mansfield Reformatory is being investigated by the cast and crew of a TV show called Portals to Hell. The Ohio State Reformatory, which is better known as the Mansfield Reformatory or Shawshank Prison, has been labeled the most haunted location in the entire state of Ohio. So those hauntings will now be taken a look at very closely on national television. That is tonight by the paranormal investigators on the show Portals to Hell. This is on the Travel Channel. So they'll be stepping inside the prison and they'll be looking for whatever ghostly evidence they can try and find. 
Portals to Hell has a twist up its sleeve when it comes to their investigation of the famous prison. We will have to wait and see exactly what that is tonight. Now, multiple other paranormal shows like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventurers have been filmed at the Ohio State Reformatory, but this is the first time that the original solitary confinement area will be investigated on television. Now, that's according to Entertainment Tonight, which posted a preview of what we can expect tonight. So the episode will air tonight at 10 p.m. on the Travel Channel if you are interested in the spooky happenings here in Ohio. If you would like to give back today, the Red Cross is hosting a blood drive at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. They are in desperate need for blood donations right now during the pandemic. A representative from the Red Cross told us at 3 News that this isn't something we can go and make more of. We only get blood from volunteer donors who come forward on a regular basis to give. So that blood drive started today at 9 a.m. It goes until 3 p.m. So there are a couple more hours and you need to make an appointment if you're able to get there today. Appointments are required. No walk-ins will be permitted. You can make that appointment by going to redcross.org or by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. They also have an app, so you can download the app and make an appointment that way. If you go to the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse location, which by the way, they have blood drives at other locations in Northeast Ohio too, so I would really recommend downloading that app and checking it out if you are so inclined to donate some blood, which is very much in need right now. But if you're going to go to Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse today between now and 3 p.m., there is free street parking available on East 6th and Eagle Avenue. If you are coming to donate your blood, you can expect to have your temperature checked and you will need to wear a mask, so keep that in mind. Now, just one pint of donated blood can save up to three people's lives. And depending on your height, your weight, and your total blood volume, most people have about 10 pints in their body, but depending on your total blood volume, you can give up to two pints of blood in one session. So if you're in that upper end of the group, you could save six lives in a very short period of time. So if you're healthy, consider donating blood. It's a great way to help out in a big way if you are so inclined. One more story to end things on a good note today. Local organizations here in Northeast Ohio have teamed up to deliver 100,000 N95 masks to frontline workers here in Cleveland. Two of the organizations behind this are the Cleveland Foundation and Oswald companies and when they learned of the N95 specific shortage here in Northeast Ohio, they really jumped into action. Nancy Mendez with the Greater Cleveland United Way said that the growing need was glaringly obvious. Here's what she said, like many of us, they saw that there was a shortage of masks for individuals on the front lines providing essential services and they wanted to come up with a solution. So. This group, which included private and public organizations, worked together and they secured 100,000 N95 masks. That is incredible. Once they got all those masks ready, Medwish stepped in to, imagine, to manage the logistics of that order. As you can imagine, 100,000 masks is a lot and then getting them to the people who need them is a lot. That's an undertaking all on its own. So Caroline Masri, who is the executive director of Medwish, said that it was absolutely an honor to contribute and be involved in the project. Over the last few weeks, the Greater Cleveland United Way made sure these masks were given to essential frontline workers at shelters, police departments, medical staff, and nonprofits that have food pantries, like the May Dugan Center, for example. People who participated in this collaboration include the Catholic Diocese, the Jewish Federation, United Way, Medwish, the Cleveland Foundation, and Oswald Companies, and all of them came together to serve Northeast Ohioans here and help keep us all safe as we try to stop the spread of COVID-19 here in Ohio. That's it for your 3 News Now early update today on Thursday, May 28th. We'll be back here at 2 p.m. as soon as we get those updated numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health. Everyone enjoy the rest of your morning. Have a great early afternoon, and I'll see you back here in just a little bit. I'm Stephanie Haney.